Hello and good evening. It is six o'clock and we're on time today. So uh, excited that uh, we can get started uh, <laughs> without any technical glitches so far. So we'll uh, keep going here at this point. But uh, I want to welcome everybody to our August 11th, uh, 2020 City Council meeting. And I will call the meeting to order and we'll start with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, visible, and justice. Thank you. Ms. Huffman, roll call, please. Mayor Ortega. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer. Here. Councilmember Thompson. Here. Councilmember Estes. Here. Councilmember Applegate. Here. Councilmember Geek. Here. Councilmember Duncan. Here. All seven members virtually present. All right, great. Um, we'll get right into it then. Uh, we are on item number four presentations. Oh, wait. I always forget to do this, and we have some newer people I, I've noticed. So, um, Paul, do you want to go ahead and go through the particulars about um, uh, for public who need to? navigate the system. Certainly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, and welcome to the council meeting. And if you're uh, attending via the GoToWebinar interface, uh, you'll see that there's a toolbar uh, with four buttons on it. If uh, all you see are the four buttons, you can expand it out to show the entire uh, toolbar by pressing on the orange arrow to open it up. Uh, when you connect, uh, all your microphones are muted, and there are two ways you can communicate with City Council. One would be to raise your hand virtually by clicking the hand button on your vertical menu bar. Uh, the other would be to type a question into the question pane in the attendee interface. If you're not connected to the web presentation and are only connected by telephone, you will not be able to raise your hand or ask a question. To raise your hand, click on the hand button on your vertical attendee menu bar. When your hand is raised, the arrow will turn from green to red. And when that happens, a member of the staff will call on you by the name you registered and will unmute you for your question. To ask a question, uh, and go to the question pane in the toolbar and type your question to council and staff members. And a staff member will read your question out loud and direct it to the appropriate party. If the question pane is not visible, click the orange arrow to open the attendee pane. All right, thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, uh, Paul, for doing that. Um, and just uh, so everyone knows, uh, as far as attendees who um, are visiting us tonight, uh, I'm keeping a track of everyone's hands as on here as well as uh, Paul will be on the background. And so in case I miss it, they've usually been texting me to let me know that someone has a question or something. And so we'll get to you um, as quickly as we can. If I, if I miss you, I apologize. We'll make sure to get everyone in as we can. So uh, we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, item 4A presentations, we have none tonight. Item 4B, board commission and committee appointments. Uh, we'll start with appointment of members to the park advisory board. So I'll let Ms. Huffman uh, go from here. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Our Park and Recreation Advisory Board currently has two regular mem or two regular positions and two alternate positions on the board available. Uh, City Clerk's Office did publish this, uh, these vacancies in our local newspaper. Um, we did receive three applications from Ms. Heather Wilmoth, Mr. Shane Kinkinnon, and Ms. Patricia, Patricia Heath. I believe Ms. Wilmoth is on um, listening to this broadcast currently. It uh, looks like she has her hand up. Um, each of these positions uh, to be filled tonight, one is for a four-year term to expire March of 2023, another one is a four-year term to expire May of 2023, and the last position will be for an alternate position for a four-year term. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak with Ms. Patricia Heath and Mr. Shane Kinkinnon, um, but Mayor, if you would like to speak with Ms. Wilmoth, I believe uh, she has her hand up. Yeah, she is there, so I will, um, it looks like she's not muted, so I don't know if you're able to talk, uh, Ms. Wilma. If not, her chat box is open. Okay, it says she has no audio. Um, 
And Paul, she doesn't even have a, a mic on her, a mic symbol. Yeah, it's looking like uh, the software is not recognizing your microphone. Okay. Okay, so um, Ms. Wilmoth, I'm hoping you can hear that. Uh, so it's just uh, like everyone else has a little microphone and you you don't on yours um, for some reason. So uh, if you'd like uh, to briefly it, just type something in the chat box, we can go that way. Um, and then uh, I will, we do have information from others that, uh, that aren't in attendance that if Ms. Huffman would like to go through those first uh, to give her time to type anything in. Absolutely. I will give a quick recap of the conversations that I had with uh, Ms. Patricia Heath. Um, she did indicate uh, one of the reasons uh, she's interested in this position is that um, she actually has um, a child who has special needs and she's very familiar of the needs and desires of that community within our parks. Uh, Mr. Shane McKinnon um, stated that he's actually been involved in several youth organizations. He has been a resident of El Paso County and just recently moved to Fountain within the last three or four years and anticipates retiring and spending the rest of his time here with his family. Uh, that's in summary that I have from the other two applicants. Okay, and uh, Paul, it looks like she has a mic for phone now that's muted and I've tried to unmute it and it, oh, it says she's self-muted. So if um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself there. And you may, you may go ahead and start talking. Okay, and it's not um, looking. At this point, so I don't know. Um, what we should do at this point, because it, it, it's lit green. It looks like she's talking, but I can't hear anything. I don't know if anybody else can. I don't hear at this time, but Mayor, um... If you'd like, I can uh, verbally give uh, Ms. Wilmoth my email address um, and she can possibly email me during the meeting as we proceed. And then uh, maybe I can interrupt a little bit later and see if I can uh, relay that information. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you know she made the effort to get online and I don't want to uh, not let her speak. So um, if it's okay with the council, we'll push this one off for a few minutes. Uh, and let her get an opportunity to either figure the, the mic out or uh, she can type something out real fast and, and then we can get that read into the record um, if everybody's okay with that. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. And so Ms. Wilmoth, uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll, get you, we'll get you figured out here so we can make sure you get um, a chance to speak. Um, so we'll move on to our next item, which is planning commission appointment. So Ms. Huffman, or Mar Ms. Martinez. Thank you. Um, Christy Martinez, Planning Supervisor. The Planning Commission currently has one vacancy from a recent resignation of a, a regular board member. The vacancy will fulfill the vacated term, which is set to expire in April of 2023. Uh, the appointed member will serve the remaining, term, the remaining portion of that uh, time on that term. Vacancy notices were published in the local newspaper for three consecutive weeks and were also advertised on the digital boards throughout the community and on social media. Through those efforts, we received two applications, one from a Taylor LeBlanc and a second one from an Angela Hackett Larson. Uh, Taylor LeBlanc is a veteran of the military and has been a resident of Fountain for six years. And Angela Hackett Larson is the chief program officer for TESA and has been a resident of Fountain for eight years. They were both invited to this meeting. I'm not sure if they were able to log in um, through the public forum. Sylvia, can okay. you see if they are in attendance? Yeah, they're both here actually. So um, okay. I will go ahead and uh, we'll unmute. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ms. Hackett Larson. Um, I'm gonna see, hold on one second, because. Okay, it says attendee can't be unmuted until they enter their pin click to send their pin. So I'm sending a pin uh, to you, Ms. Larson, to see um, 
Can I ask a question to Christy really quick while you're doing yeah. that? Yeah, go ahead. Christy, um, we normally have alternates on this board. We currently have two alternates um, on the Planning Commission, uh, which does allow for the two alternates which have already been fulfilled. Okay, all right, that, think that answers my question. I was hoping there might be a vacancy in an alternate also, so okay. All right. And Mayor, uh, she's on via telephone, um, so she'll have to key in a, uh, a touch tone sequence to unmute her phone. Okay, and I think she's trying. I just got a message that says she entered in when she dialed and then thanks. And so I don't, um, this is a difficult part about uh, virtual meetings and, and uh, ensuring everyone can talk. So, um, it, so what it's asking Ms. Larson is for you just to put that pin in. I don't know where to put it in. Uh, I've also entered the pin a second time and it's not working. So, um, yeah, Mayor, uh, Mayor, she'll have to enter that uh, via the touchstone keypad on her telephone. Yeah, I think she just did. Okay. Yeah, and it's not it's not working. So, um, uh, yeah, it, should, it says she has used that. So I don't know. Again, at this point, um, this is frustrating. Uh, is there a workaround on that, Paul, or is it just uh, for some reason not working? I don't. Uh, unfortunately, no workaround unless uh, she is able to connect via the uh, uh, a client on a computer uh, okay. and use a, a microphone and, and speakers. That would be the about the only way we could do it. Could they? Well, it looks like it looks like she just came up. Phone number and she. Oh, hold on. Up. Okay. <laughs> Can you guys she, hear me? Oh yeah, there you are. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, go ahead and uh, so the way we normally do this in a, in a real session is, uh, or an in-person session is we just have the person come up and just kind of give us uh, kind of a little bit real quick about who you are and why you want to serve. And, and if there's any questions from the council, we'll, we'll sure ask those, um, but just want to give you an opportunity to, to kind of just tell us why you, you want to serve on the planning commission. Great, thank you. So I've been um, in this community in El Paso County for about 30 years. I purchased a home here in Fountain in 2012. Um, and I just really, I like this community a lot. I, I love Colorado itself. My family's had tickets to the Broncos for a long time. I have tickets to Colorado College. Um, and I've kind of laid my roots here and done my work in nonprofit work for the last 10 years. Um, and through that, I've sat on a variety of different boards. So I sat on the Pikes Peak Continuum of Care in Colorado Springs, uh, which really was, you know, just quickly about that board. That that particular um, board receives the funding from HUD, the state money that's pushed down to El Paso County, and then is responsible for um, disseminating out who that funding goes to. So the nonprofit agencies in town. So that was about 2.1 million that we dispersed out within Colorado Springs. Uh, I also have sat on the board for the Rocky Mountain Community Land Trust, which is a great first time home buyer program um, in El Paso County, and then also on the board at Violence Free Colorado, which was previously CCADV. So I have a lot of experience there. Um, I'm specifically interested in the strategic priorities that the city has put together. I think transportation infrastructure here in town is a uh, huge opportunity and something that should be looked at that I like to have some, you know, conversation or just some involvement in. And then around the improvement of the ability of venues, um, I think that's certainly an opportunity considering the size that Fountain is becoming and the amount of growth that we've had over the years. I know there's a small, just a small over off 85, 87, a uh, little um, like venue where you, you know, conference center, you know, I think there's some opportunity to kind of enhance that and just look at, you know, kind of building, you know, a lot, a lot of the growth south and then also east of here, what opportunities are um, available. So I'm, you know, I just would like to bring my experience that I've had on some boards into the city of Fountain. Um, like I said, I've laid some roots here and I've been here about eight years and I just want to continue to be involved in public service work and contribute to a community that I really enjoy and um, I'd like to be a part of this opportunity. So thank you. 
I'm muted now, so I'm sorry. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to check to see if there's any questions from council for yourself at this point, and I don't see any um, lights on. So uh, just hold on real quick, and and I'm going to um, uh, mute you for a second. And I'm going to uh, Mr. LeBlanc. I saw is on, and we'll unmute him. And it says he's self muted. So if you'd like to speak, um, oh, yeah. and there Hello? you are. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we're good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, Taylor LeBlanc, I um, retired out of the Army about three years ago, and I found myself with uh, a whole lot of time and desire to continue to give back to my community. Um, I've lived in the community continuously for six years and in the area for 10 that I've been stationed and then retired as well. So I spent my last about eight years in the Army here. But um, it, the only real planning um, experience that I have, uh, I, I got to, fortunate enough to help the Army build basically small cities, the Ford operating bases and logistics hubs and things like that in Afghanistan. And just it just fascinated me. And I do see how that we are growing. and. I know that can be chaotic, and I, I definitely don't bring as much experience as our other candidate. But um, I do, I do. I'm very interested in seeing how we can grow Fountain effectively and efficiently because it's. I don't, I don't like chaos, and I think a good planning commission can control that, but let businesses thrive and wonderful communities thrive simultaneously, and that's really what I've got to offer. All right, uh, thank you for that. And um, he put himself back on mute. And uh, let me check to see if there's any questions uh, for either candidate from the council. And again, we have one opening uh, currently for the planning commission that we're filling. Uh, and it, it is to expire in April of 2023. Um, so it looks like we have no questions. So I will uh, leave it up to council to uh, make a nomination for the planning commission. Okay, is, uh, okay uh, Mr. Applegate, your light's on. Yeah, did Mr. LeBlanc, did he, did he say he had experience uh, working with area planning and stuff when he was in the military? Uh, yes, sir. We Part of my responsibility when I did planning when I was in Afghanistan is they would send me out and I would build Ford operating bases, which in essence, they're not cities but we have to plan where workplaces are where living quarters are sewer um, and other facilities for the soldiers that were there and we took one for instance our biggest project we took one base that was about an acre and in eight months we built it on the 350 acres with sewer lines um, laundromats entertainment areas office buildings, of course logistics areas things like that to include helicopter pads and things like that so some of it's not directly related but um, that was the experience that I gathered over there all right seems like mr. LeBlanc has some background uh, I'd like to nominate mr. LeBlanc for the position okay we have a nomination From Mr. Applegate, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Geek. I'll second that nomination. Okay, so we have a nomination and second uh, for Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, with that, I will uh, have Ms. Uh, Huffman do the call. Thank you. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? 
Before I vote, I would just like to state thank you to both of them for applying. Um, it's always hard to make a choice when you have very qualified candidates and there's uh, not enough positions for all of them. I would encourage Angela to um, continue to apply because I think you have fantastic credentials and I thank you for applying and um, I am going to go ahead and vote no from, uh, I'm sorry, yes, for Mr. LeBlanc with, with uh, the appreciation of both of them applying and um, hope, hope to see Angela on this board later date or maybe a different board. Thank you. Council Member Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, and again, as uh, Ms. Uh, Thompson stated, just uh, um, you know, we, we encourage people to, to be a part of the process all the time. So uh, uh, just keep an eye out. And these things really go in waves. Um, we'll have a, a few weeks to months where we don't have any openings and all of a sudden the floodgates open and we have a lot of openings. So uh, just keep an eye out um, in the paper and things like that and, and see when those openings occur and get your name in. And, and uh, we do appreciate uh, both of you volunteering uh, to put yourself on this um, commission. So. Um, what we'll do at this point is we're going to go back to real quick to see if uh, Ms. Wilmoth uh, is working. So I'm going to unmute her. Um, and if not, did uh, Ms. Huffman, did you get anything from her? Mayor, I did receive an email from her and um, okay. so she, she has said, a, uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear she me now? Yeah, I can. There you go. <laughs> it's a Verizon commercial. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, I didn't hear anything um, for the first, um, I guess, maybe five minutes of what was going on. I actually had to download the app onto my phone to get to hear everything. Okay, uh, so what we're doing now is we're just uh, we're going through the candidates for um, the, the park advisory board. Um, which you apply for, um, and you're the only one that has a, a, we're able to get on out of the three applicants for that. We have two uh, normal seats and an alternate seat uh, uh -huh. for that position, and just want to give you an opportunity to tell us about yourself, uh, a brief opportunity to tell us about yourself and, and why you'd like to be on the Park Advisory Board. Yes, yeah, so I've lived El Paso, I've lived in El Paso County for about 20 years now. I originally was from California, so transplant. I love it here. Um, been part of the city of Fountain for five years now, have three boys ages 17 to eight. So they basically could take care of themselves now. So I'm ready to go out <laughs> and do this type of stuff. Um, community work. My husband works for the Fountain Fort Carson School District 8. He's been with them for over 10 years now. Um, I actually worked a little bit with School District 8 as well. Um, right now I work with Waste Connections and one of the biggest reasons why I love working for Waste Connections is a lot of the community programs that we do do um, during Christmas time, during Thanksgiving, we do reach out to a lot of the families um, with the school districts, District 3, District 2, 11, 8. Um, we donate uh, food for the families in need, we'll adopt uh, families, you know, buy gifts, things like that. So I love being part of something that does give back to our community. I feel like that's where I really find a passion for myself. Um, I do sit on a lot of the safety board committees at work too. If there's ever accidents at work, things like that, um, we'll go through a review, um, see if it was preventable, non-preventable, things like that. So I, I just enjoy giving back to the community wherever I can. Um, like I said, that's why I love working with Waste Connections because we give back a lot to the community. So a little bit about me <laughs> okay all right thank you for um uh finally i'm glad we were able to get the work out so you got to say something yeah me too <laughs> um, uh, so i appreciate the the patience and, and sticking with it so um uh so council we've heard uh uh from miss wilmoth and then the kind of the brief summaries that were provided by the other two uh folks and uh, again um it looks like we can get all three appointed to seats uh, again we have two permanent seats and then one alternate seat uh, we need to appoint to. So I will open it up to council to um, make a recommendation. Uh, Ms. Thompson? 
Are we making a motion um, one seat at a time or a whole slate or what, what would you like us to do? I think if it's okay, we can, um, I think we can do one uh, motion and just kind of specify because we have one that ends, I just went back to the other page. Okay, I have one that ends um, March of 2023, the other one is May of 2023 and then the alternate. So um, if we, we like, we could say this person for March, this person for May and this person for alternate, if that's uh, okay with our attorney and um, uh, Ms. Huffman. Okay, I have a question for uh, Ms. Wilmoth. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I saw your application here and it says you're a diesel mechanic. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I actually went to Pikes Peak Community College. I got my automotive and diesel degree. Um, so I started <laughs> off doing mechanics, but then I worked my way up into the office at Waste Connection. So now I do a lot of their accounts receivables, receivable accounts payable. Um, I'm part of their lead uh, board and stuff like that. So yeah, I do miss mechanics though. <laughs> Okay, I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, uh, okay, Ms. Thompson. Go ahead. Um, okay, for the first term that ends in March, I would like to nominate, I wrote down the last name of Heath. I'm sorry, I don't see the Patricia. Heath. Um, the second term that ends in, there's too much paperwork here. May. No, May, thank you. Um, uh, Heather Wilmoth, and then the alternate, Shane Kin uh, Kin 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 Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, so we have a motion for the uh, March 5th, 2023 expiration term uh, to Ms. Heath, the one for May 3rd of the same year to Ms. Wilmoth, and then uh, Mr. Kinkinnon to the alternate position um and so that would be the motion and uh mayor pro tem you're... i second that okay so we have a motion and second uh for that if there's no further discussion um we'll let mrs huffman do the call thank you mayor Ortega, how do you vote yes mayor pro tem lauer how do you vote yes council member thompson how do you vote yes council member estes how do you vote yes Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes, motion carried. Okay, thank you to those who again um, have volunteered uh, their time and, and their talents to the, to the city. Um, staff will be getting to you soon to kind of start you in the process and kind of orient yourself to everything that goes on with those boards um, we do appreciate all that it's it takes a lot of work and and um, a lot of commitment and and uh, it's people like uh, those who volunteer for anything that that really help the organizations um, do well and and be successful so thank you to that um, for everyone and again uh, for anybody who's listening um, we often have uh, seats available on our different commissions and boards and and just keep an eye out and see what is available and uh, please apply. And, and these ones are easy because you don't have to go through the rigmarole. You just fill out an application and, and talk a few minutes and, and more than likely you can get onto a, a position. So we are, again, very thankful um, for that. So uh, we are gonna go ahead and keep moving forward. We are on item number five, City Council agenda requests and announcements. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Ms. Duncan. Anything tonight? Good afternoon again. I just want to state that our applications for our youth council are available on a fillable form. Uh, if you go to the fountain uh, webpage, you'll be able to fill out the form there. We have a lot of interest, um, a lot of families calling in the community. So I appreciate the interest and excited to get started next month. Great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Geek, anything? Uh, yes, I don't know whether Chief Heber is on tonight or not, but I would like to thank him for the diligent work that he did for the uh, traffic issue that seems to be up in Medicine Bowl. I just wanted to thank him. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's been, I don't know, it's one of those things, again, we go in waves. We got, uh, Ms. Thompson and I got a, a email last week about speeding, and and uh, then I got a, another email from the paper, and, and uh, you know, I, I guess my message to um, the public is, you know, in, in dealing with speeding, you know, we wish we could have a, well, most of us wish we could have a cop on every uh, street corner and, and, and there to police these types of things, but the reality is it's just, it's not possible and something that is also unrealistic. So we have a traffic team that is out and they circulate throughout the city on a very regular basis. Um, and they try to hit the key areas. And, and the other thing they do is look at uh, um, traffic um, uh, stats and, and, and keep track of those types of things as you know, accidents and, and previous speeding and those types of things occur. And they try to really focus on those more often than the other areas. But you know, there are times when, when you have people that, that feel like, well, I haven't seen a cop here for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do what I need to do and get into where I need to get there as quickly as I can. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we work tirelessly to do that. And along with everything else that the PD does, we, um, uh, we do appreciate all those efforts. But uh, again, for everybody, if you have comments or questions around those types of things, please don't hesitate to call the, the police department and, and they'll be able to, you know, give you the information and go through those stats with you as well. So um, thanks for bringing that up, Mr. Geek. Um, Thank you. Anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Applegate. Yeah. And just one thing I drove by over there on uh, Allegra just to see how things were going. I ran into the foreman of the crew over there and I watched them work for, they have a pretty good crew and they're moving right along now. It's a, it's under a different group. And I asked him what the timetable was maybe to move those K rails and get that intersection open up there right on 85. And he said he could have done it either yesterday or today. He said he's just waiting on uh, traffic control with his company to come mm -hmm. and go ahead and open that. So that may be happening real soon. Or okay. maybe it is. I haven't been up there today, so maybe it did. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for checking on that. Um, yeah, that's been kind of a, a concern there, but uh, I think that's out of our hands anyway. But uh, thanks for checking on that. Anything else? Hey, Mayor. No, this is Bob. Hey, Mayor. Oh, yeah, if go I ahead. Just, uh, if I could just comment on uh, Mr. Applegate's uh, discussion, I really want to thank several members of the community down there in that Allegra neighborhood. Um, they've helped us with, I don't know if I'd call it putting pressure on uh, the Army Corps of Engineers down there. And, and Richard was part of that. His son was part of that. Sharon helped us. And it really does help when we all bring that communication together and um, I reached out to them last week, but then also forwarded that to them. They also made comments. So it kind of goes towards what your comment was on the speeding. It's it's much, much better when we all work together to try to solve those. So that's just a good, we really don't have say so, as you just said on that project, but we really were hitting Whitefield Water, the Army Corps of Engineers, and it really did help with everybody coming together. So um, I think it just um, emphasizes what you said. Let us know. We'll keep working on them, and we'll bring everybody together. So I appreciate uh, Councilman Applegate and uh, Councilwoman Thompson's help with that. All right. Yep. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, Ms. Estes. I have to get myself unmuted. Um, I just have one thing. Um, in August this year, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of uh, women's suffrage. It passed. The 19th Amendment passed ratification on August 18, 1920, when Tennessee ratified the 19th Amendment. And in recognition of that, uh, communities around the United States are going to commemorate it by lighting up their public buildings with purple and gold lights. And our city hall will be lit up with purple and gold on August 26th, which is International Women's uh, Equality Day in the commemoration of that. And I just want to thank everybody that made that possible. And that's all I have tonight. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for doing that. And, and if I can uh, take a second, just to brag a little bit. So uh, uh, pre-COVID, when they were gonna do the St. Patrick's Day Parade, uh, um, my wife was uh, called and asked to be a 
uh, one of the grand marshals. And I say one of the grand marshals because they were going to have um, 100 uh, women from across the, I, I'm assuming the city and, and the city fountain and kind of the county, um, they were asking a bunch of different um, women to come out. They were all gonna dress in white as they did back a hundred years ago and in, in, in what they were doing and trying to pass that. And and they were all gonna wear the the sash and everything and, and uh, be a part of that um, uh, grand marshal thing. And of course, COVID came and kind of wiped that out. And so uh, apparently they're still trying to do a parade here soon and they're gonna uh, do that. But uh, uh, about three weekends ago, um, they did a reenactment of a photo over at Garden of the Gods Park um, where they all showed up and they uh, were all wearing white and, and had the sashes on and everything and took a, a pretty cool picture. And, and I don't know where that's going to get published or printed, but um, uh, they even did the picture with the masks on so that, uh, you know, in another hundred years, they could, uh, you know, show that picture of, of, of what had happened over the course of that hundred years and, and where we were that day, or of course, two, three weeks ago. And and uh, show the, the people hopefully in another hundred years what, what we were going through then and, and commemorating something you know that way. But uh, just to brag a little bit on, on my wife, but uh, that was, it was a cool um, uh, thing. And I do want to also mention that uh, our own Brandy Williams was also one of those that was standing there. And so it was nice to, um, to see uh, Fountain represented um, in that way. But uh, uh, thanks Ms. Estes and keeping us um, uh, uh, in tune with that, and and I'm looking forward to driving by on the 26th to see the lights. And uh, the picture is out on that. I have several friends that participated in that, and I've seen the picture on Facebook all over. Oh, so okay. It, it, it's a really cool picture. So, congratulations to your wife and Brandy for participating in that. Good job. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, that's awesome. Okay, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> For the first time since April, I am not going to say a single thing about the creek or the creek project. Um, but I do want to mention um, coming up at the uh, in the September October time frame it is the Creek Week event, the annual Creek Week event. I've got some information from Allison Shook, who is the communications outreach director, so to speak. Uh, and Allison is. Uh, because of the COVID situation, they are not looking for cities to do the typical proclamation that they've had us do in the past, but she's going to give me some materials that we can put on the city website and Facebook and whatnot to promote the Creek Week event. They're still wanting to hold that with all the proper safety and uh, social distancing precautions, and all the sponsors who were around last year are still on board to support that event this year to do a big creek, a big Creek cleanup as we've done in the past. And she's even expanded the Bruce Shed Alliance even a little further than normal. So that's a way to uh, kind of partner up with some of the local microbrews and support a cleaner Fountain Creek while supporting the microbrew at the same time. So I'll get some information to the folks who are responsible for updating the website so we can get that on. And uh, otherwise, I've got not a single thing about the creek except to say, uh, Brandy and I and Todd are working kind of behind the scenes with some folks from Colorado Springs Utilities to bring us a little bit closer to that becoming uh, a tangible project in the in the area. So that's it. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Ms. Thompson. Yeah, PPCG, we're um, having virtual meetings. We're working two years since we wrote our first ever um, strategic plan there. So first time in 50 years, two years ago already. So we're going section by section this month and um, just kind of tweaking it and making some changes and different things as you do to those plans and see what you've accomplished and what needs to be changed a little bit. And then I uh, had a meeting with um, several staff members about making some tweaks to the um, the military banner appreciation program. So we'll probably be bringing those to you guys next meeting. And uh, believe it or not, we've uh, had some meeting with some other same staff members uh, working on um, trunk or treat. So uh, seeing what we're going to do to make some changes there. Not ready to release anything yet, but I think. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting. You know, obviously events as we go on are going to have to be different, but um, I, I think we've got some exciting ideas and I look forward to working with staff to get those fleshed out. Okay. 
Thank you. The only thing I have tonight is um, I would like to, if you would all indulge me uh, for a moment of silence, uh, we lost um, a, he's a former mayor of Woodland Park, a mayor, Neil Levy. Um, he just ended his last term uh, this past April, and I got to know him over the last few years, um, and a lot of the things that we did as, as mayors and, and working together. Um, uh, but up in Woodland Park, he did a really good job of really unifying the community up there. He was a, a, a super nice uh, person, and um, I got the opportunity to meet his wife, and and uh, they were just a really good people. And and his he he his heart was truly for the community of Woodland Park and the things that he did, and 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 working with him along with the other mayors and trying to move um, this entire region forward. He um, was uh, an integral piece, and and he, you know he was about collegiality. Uh, working together and cooperation so uh if it's okay with you all i would like to take a few moments of silence we just uh they just had his um a memorial service this past sunday um he uh ended up passing away with cancer uh, but it, it was very aggressive and i think he um from the time he was initially diagnosed to to the time he passed was just a little over six months so unfortunately if you if you didn't get a chance to meet him that uh uh, it's too bad, but uh, you may also know him as the owner of the Swiss Chalet and uh, the Pepper Tree in the Colorado Springs area. So um, just a really good overall uh, nice guy who loved baseball. So um, we're going to take a quick uh, moment of silence for him. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our public to be heard item. Uh, citizens may address the council on items that are not on the agenda. We ask that you sign up with the city clerk prior to the meeting and council may not be able to provide an immediate answer, but we'll direct staff to follow up. Um, out of respect for the council and others attends, we ask that you limit your comments at three minutes or less. Um, and I don't see any hands up. I think I just... Uh, Ms. Huffman, did we get any emails or anything? No, sir. Okay. Okay, so we will go ahead and um, move forward. Uh, item number seven is our consent agenda. Um, all items listed under the consent agenda are to be considered to be routine and will be approved with one motion. There will be no separate uh, discussion of these items unless a council member citizen so requests which case the item may be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Um, I did get an email today. I don't know if someone wanted to um, talk about that, but I think we were gonna pull item 7B. Um, uh, Mayor, this is Dan Blankenship. I can address that if you'd like. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is, this is an item uh, to do the uh, programming and controls for the booster pump station at the new joint utilities um, operations facility. Uh, and uh, after we had prepared it and submitted it into the packet, uh, we came to the uh, realization that when the council uh, increased uh, the city manager's uh, spending authorization uh, earlier this spring, that this particular item falls within that authorization. Um, so he he is uh, authorized to to approve this administratively. Um, so it does not require council action. So we can we can pull it from from the agenda if that is uh, the council's pleasure. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of the council members may have about the item if there are any. Okay. Okay. And other than that, we have approval of our city council uh, meeting minutes from uh, July 28th. So I will leave it up to council. Okay. A lot of, uh, all of a sudden everyone's uh, mics came on, so I'm just going to go with the top. Uh, Ms. Duncan? Is it time for the make to motion? Yeah, if you'd like. Okay. I motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, and then um, uh, do a motion for approval, Mr. Applegate? Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second for approval. Um, 
I'm assuming it's so. This is a little weird since we didn't really make a our table item B. Did we need anything with that, uh, Troy, or can we just go ahead and, or Sylvia? Actually, Mayor, my preference is to make a motion um, to table item 7B and then another motion to approve the consent agenda with the minute. Okay. And so I don't even think we're tabling it. They're just pulling it from the from the agenda altogether. So um, so let's uh, back up and we'll need a motion to um, uh, pull item 7B if so everyone would be okay with that. So uh, Ms. Duncan? I make a motion that we pull um, item 7B from the consent agenda. Okay, and Mr. Applegate? Um, was that the motion? Or yeah. Do we, <laughs> or do we yeah, need we another motion. one? The other one's yeah. been tabled. Yeah, so we're motioning, that was a motion just to pull 7B off the agenda. Okay, second that. Okay, so Ms. Hoffman, go ahead with the call. Thank you, Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. Okay, and now we need to do a motion just to approve our consent agenda item 7A. Uh, Mr. Applegate? Yeah, I move that we uh, <laughs> we approve consent agenda with with A. Okay. And Ms. Duncan? I second. Okay, we have a motion and second for our consent agenda, item 7A. Uh, Ms. Huffman, sorry. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes, motion carried. Okay, great. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to item number eight, old business. We have no items uh, tonight, so we'll go to item nine, New business item 9A. There was nothing removed um, for discussion. We will move on to item 9B. Uh, resolution. Let me pull it up here. Sorry. Um, resolution number 20-061. Review and adoption of a resolution amending the City of Fountain Strategic Plan, uh, 2019 to 2021. Uh, Mr. Trainer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the City Council. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, be here with you tonight. Um, wanted to share with you uh, the resolution amending the City of Fountain strategic plan. As the council knows, we adopted our original, uh, well, not the original, but we adopted our current strategic plan back at the beginning of 2019, and that's a three-year plan. We have, um, every six months, we have a, a strategic plan review with the council. At our mid-year review this year, the council, that was back in July, the council discussed several modifications to that plan and amendment. So. What you have before you with this resolution is um, are some modifications to our existing strategic plan. So let me go through those just briefly real quick. The first um, two really are in the telecommunications piece and that's TT number six. And, and that um, recommendation, that modification would be to have our utility director finalize negotiations with a strategic partner in order to facilitate provision of high speed, um, basically broadband to the fountain community. As we move forward with our strategic plan, um, the council discussed the various um, items that were achieved and, and wanted to continue with the direction we're heading with telecom. The second related one is that the director would provide an update briefing to the council and the public um, no later than uh, November 2021. And so you can see those. Um, by the way, these are all in that resolution as well, as well as your uh, agenda item. The public safety um, item, PS3, that is to, and the council discussed this as well, um, to propose and provide a um, proposal to the city council regarding a co-responder -respo model with the police department, whereby we would bring in um, a mental health 
expert to assist on um, some of the calls that our police officers um, go to that really need someone who has an expertise in, in mental health. And so uh, Chief Heber discussed the county beacon teams and he also discussed the Colorado Springs team. I can't remember if they had a name or not, but um, we wanna basically emulate the beacon team model. That is a partnership through, um, oh, uh, UC Health, by the way. Um, so we would partner with them and Chris is working on, Chief Heber is working on a proposal. But this, this um, uh, item would add that as a, as a part of our a strategic plan as well. Um, and then down on recreation, as you know, with um, COVID, that's put um, a, a major delay in our recreation facility plans. Um, and so that uh, RF3 that was e existing in our strategic plan basically anticipated bringing something to the community this year um, to have them vote on, on a mill levy of some sort or some sort of formation of a, of a recreation district or something along those lines that would build a recreation facility. Well, um, with COVID, the city of Fountain got together with Whitefield and decided this is not a good time to be going to our voters with the economic impacts going on in our community right now to go to voters and, and ask them to pony up funds for a rec facility. So essentially this RF4 that's in here um, sets a new kind of resets, it sets a new timeline um, that a recreation um, director would would move forward in in trying to push that towards fruition. So that is an overview of the, of the uh, amendments to the strategic plan, and we adopt these by resolution. So that's why you have this resolution 20-061 in front of you. The last thing there, and, and uh, you can see that they just got pulled up on your um, on the PowerPoint slides, is just a reminder. Um, I know John Trilch went through this before in our mid-year review. That is just a reminder of the timeline that we'll be going through. So this next year, we'll begin the planning stages for our next strategic plan um, timeframe. So with that, I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you, Scott. Um, yes, I'm gonna look at council here and it looks like we have a couple questions. I'm gonna start with Mr. Applegate. Yeah, I was wondering, Scott, on the TT six and seven, 2021 it's going to take 16 months just to give us a report Am I, is that correct well it's it's not just giving you a report it's actually going through see they, they have to negotiate an agreement and dan can jump on here if he has any more details but they need to negotiate a, well go through the whole process of negotiating um, a public private partnership and so there's actually quite a bit of discussion that has to happen relative to that um, before we can bring something to the city council. But yeah, that's the time frame they're proposing right now. Well, we had discussed, I thought, trying to get ahead of October 2021 because of the fact that the council would be more than half new. Well, these are the dates that the council discussed in that um, council retreat. If the council wants us to, to uh, modify that, then just give us that direction. Okay, I thought we had discussed getting ahead of that that last period of 2021. Well, uh, Mayor, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, this is Dan Blankenship and and, and Councilmember Applegate. Yeah, yes, we did. We we did discuss that. We set that uh, in our in that discussion as a as our target date with our anticipation that we would be come in in advance of that date. Council Member Applegate, this is John Trelch as well. Originally in the discussion, that date was set at December of 2021. And during the discussion, it was moved back to October so that it would uh, better synchronize with the election and would capture the full progress of that plan and partnership uh, right at, at that time um, before the election period. But this is only a progress report. Right. Item item TT six is actually coming forward with an agreement. Oh. Oh, there will be an agreement to vote on. Yes, sir. Okay. That's what all right. Looks like an information on P three here according to what the packet gave. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh Mr. Geek. Yes, I was uh privileged to see that beacon plan that the county uses in action about uh, a week and a half ago and that was pretty impressive so 
if we can get that done, that's that's uh, going to be a help to a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, and I think um, you know, with with where the country is going right now um, in regards to police and policing, you know, a lot of those things that are that are being thrown out and suggested, you know, luckily we we've been kind of on the forefront of those things, but that's one I think that. Uh, um, has really been a part of that discussion as well. And, you know, we, we send our cops out to uh, go deal with the situation. And, and oftentimes they're trying to wear, you know, three, four, five, ten different hats while they're trying to respond to a, an incident. And, and uh, being able to bring an expert in on, on a situation that, that can really help de-escalate, you know, um, something along those lines, I think would really help um, not only the police, but it will help the, the the people involved in that incident, and and uh, hopefully getting a a solution that's not going to end up bad. And so, you know, it's always the goal, at least for our police department, um, to to get situations um, knocked down as quickly as possible. But at the same time, they they're they're trying to be respectful. They're trying to you know get the 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 major part of whatever is going on, that disagreement or whatever it is, um, you know, I don't, subdued's the wrong word, but I'm trying to think of the right word to use, um, you know, get it eased um, so that we can, you know, then step back in the middle of everything, take a deep breath, um, and then then be able to move forward uh, respectfully for everybody the best you can in, in whatever situation that is. And I think bringing that person in um, to help with that and who's going to have that expertise and and be on the, 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 the sidelines right there, you know, I think is, is a key thing. And I think it, it will be very important for us um, to be able to do that. And, and like you said, Mr. Geek, it's really been working in other communities. So. Well, I so, saw three, three, there were three officers and then the mental health person. And it was amazing how quickly that got fixed and the person got taken care of without a whole lot of effort from a whole lot of people. Yeah, and that that I think that's the that's the big ask of everybody right now is is uh, um, how do we de-escalate a situation? That's the word I was looking for. Sorry about subdued. It's de-escalate a situation um, that's going to be uh, with a, a as positive an outcome as possible and um, as respectful to everybody as possible. So um, it's really hard. And you know what? For our our uh, men and women who are responding to these calls, it's scary for them. You know, they're they're going in and not knowing what's what's happened. You know, prior to them being called, it's, it's it's a very scary situation, and and they have as much training as we can get them. Uh, but you know, those types of things is going to be very helpful um, having that extra person. Uh, if I could add something to that, Mr. Mayor, I know um, Chief Heber is actually getting some data from UC Health and the existing Beacon program because there's actually, in addition to the help, it, it actually saves a lot of our own, our own time and equipment and expenses and. There's some efficiencies that you gain from this as well. So he he's up pulling that information together, not only how it impacts um, our police officers, but also the firefighters, because there's a lot of issues that they walk into that they could use a mental health professional to assist them as well. So um, he will be, I know he's already working on pulling that data together for the council, but um, that's exactly what this will be. And I think there's, it's kind of an exciting time to be looking at doing, making a significant change like that. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Um, and now, will this person also be available for our staff, or is it just for the the, the people involved in the incident? Yeah, that, that's a great question. That's something that came up in our council discussion around this. So Chris spent some time with the UC Health folks um, on this and discussing that issue. And because of the liability issues and, and the very specific nature of the expertise that these mental health, um, I don't know what the title is, but the mental health professionals deal with, they really aren't um, equipped to deal with your your normal employee mental health issues, and we have some EAP programs that help with that that are specialists in that. Um, right. But yeah, they're very focused more on the. I'm not going to use the right world, but more more of the um, I don't know the traumatic sort of issues that are, that are happening in public safety. Okay, yeah, and and again for public and for others, uh, um, we do have and uh, um, people that are available for our police, for our firemen, for when there's an incident they have to respond to, that, that there's, they're gonna be able to go talk to someone after and, and, and help them with, with whatever you know, reactions they may start dealing with after the fact. So um, we do have that available. So uh, any other questions on, on this item?
Okay, I am seeing none. Oh, Mr. Applegate? No, I was just muting. Okay, well, um, I, it sounds like, uh, you know, we're at a good point here. Um, as Mr. Applegate said earlier, we are, um, uh, and we're going to start working on our next strategic uh, priorities, um, probably after the first of the year and just moving forward and, and doing that. So we're going to really push the public to be involved in that. And as, because we're, um, you know, we're, we're, charting the future for our city and and uh, again with um, uh, a new council coming on board at the end of 2021 it's going to be very important that that we have those right priorities um, and ready to go for that new council um, so if you do have an interest to run for council um, you may want to really be a part of those discussions and conversations um, in the event that you do get elected you can um, hit the ground running with those so um, with that i will take a motion um, mr applegate your mic's on yeah I move to adopt resolution 20-061. Okay, and uh, Ms. Estes? I second that. Okay, we have a motion and second. Uh, Ms. Huffman? Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. All righty. We will keep moving forward. Item 9C, resolution number 20-063, a resolution amending the COVID-19 Business Impact Assistance Program. Uh, Mr. Trainer. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm back. For another item here, um, I, I've uh, I, I've always been a real. I've been excited about this program since we began it. The council approved the business impact assistance program back in May, um, using a portion of the CARES dollars that the uh, county allocated to the city, and and I think it's just a very positive program. Um, so we've got a subgroup um, that works for, out of the um, EDC that helps review each of the applications. And so we brought together those folks um, to ask them, because our time is quickly coming to an end where we have to have identified where we're gonna spend these dollars. Um, we have to have them spent by the end of December. And really by the end of September, we need to at least be able to give the county an indication of where those dollars are gonna be spent. So the, the group discussed how we could potentially expand this uh, grant program. This is a micro grant program for those who may not be aware. Um, for small businesses in Fountain. To date, um, our focus, as the council knows, has been on small businesses with less than 20 um, employees and their, their um, kind of your brick and mortar businesses around the community. And so there's a list of criteria that we use to evaluate those applications. And to date, we've issued about 311,000, well, it's over just a little bit over 311,000, <coughs> excuse me, in grants um, to date. Well, the group is uh, requesting that we expand the eligibility now to include nonprofit organizations, some home-based businesses, mobile vendors, commercial landlords, and other professionals who rent booth space from established businesses. You have the criteria in that resolution, uh, but the idea is to see if we can somehow increase um, the ability of some of our businesses in the community, many of which are, are small home-based businesses, um, to receive some of these funds for their impacts. And so if I could just touch base on those briefly, the application process would be very, very similar to the our existing application process. We don't have a lot of staff, and so we wanted to keep this as easy as possible. So we want to, we want to keep that application process very similar. There are a few differences, however. So <clears throat> let me just briefly hit on those. For our nonprofit organizations, um, we would allow them to apply for the specifically COVID-19 related costs uh, up to a maximum of 5,000 per nonprofit. Um, on the home-based businesses, um, we had some discussions around that, around that and it would uh, be to pay for uh, COVID-related costs or losses up to 2,000 per employee or 8,000 maximum. As a reminder, our current plan is 3,000 for a, for a brick and mortar business, 3,000 per employee up to 15,000 maximum. We got looking at the scope and scale of small businesses that are home-based and um, you really typically aren't going to have more than four employees anyway. But we also, part of the discussion around that was around direct or network 
um, marketing types of businesses. And because there's so many questions about those businesses, not not about the business themselves, I know some people have a lot of success with those, but then some people just use them um, to purchase um, products that they love for themselves at discounted price. We just thought that was gonna be too hard for us to administer those, so those would not be eligible. It'd be expanding um, the program to include the mobile vendor types of businesses like food trucks or animal groomers for their COVID related costs or losses up to 2000 per employee or 8,000 maximum. So it's basically treating them as just another home-based business. Um, but we just felt like it was a little bit different. So we wanted to specify those in here as well, <clears throat> excuse me. And then also it's not a huge help to commercial landlords, but to provide at least something in paying a portion of their lost rents to COVID-19 for up to 3000 per commercial tenant, but no more than 15 per landlord. Um, and then there, we wanted some clarification for those um, professionals, and I mentioned them here in the resolution, such as hairstylists, massage, massage therapists, et cetera, who rent booth spaces from, you know, brick and mortar types of businesses where they may exist. So, you know, you may have a hair salon that has an owner for the actual business, and they could potentially apply for um, these funds for their own business, but the booth rent, some, excuse me, some of the hairstylists may rent their booths. And so they wouldn't be treated as employees for the main business, but they would be treated as their own, for lack of a better term, kind of a mini business for their own booth rental. And that would allow them to um, apply for a, at least a little bit of funds as well. So that's the request with this expansion program. And again, the hope is that we can get these dollars out there in our community before um, you know our deadlines hit. A any questions for me at this point? Um, I are we good on ensuring that those who have been uh, uh, eligible, we've we've exhausted every um, possibility of trying to make sure that they apply? I know Lexi was you know calling people saying, "Hey, we got money, please." please come in and fill out stuff. So are, are we pretty comfortable with ensuring that um, those who probably need it first, I guess, um, has have had that opportunity? So now we've sent out two, uh, so we have a mailing list through our business licensing program, an email list. And so we've sent them out through that. Um, and then we've also made a lot of phone calls. And then there's a lot of word of mouth going on as well, because right. we'll, we always find, um, regardless of the, the mailings that we sent out, We've had businesses who we've we've talked to personally who have said, "Oh, well, I I saw all that. I just thought it was a loan program," right. and um, so we've just had, even though everything you know focuses on the grant aspects of it, we've just had to make sure that we clarify that as we go. But it's just an ongoing effort. Okay, all right. Uh, so far, let's see, Miss Thompson. Scott, on the D part for the commercial landlords. Yeah. Is that if they had a tenant already in there and either the tenant didn't pay the rent or they lost the tenant due to the tenant having to close their business or, I mean, they couldn't have had an empty right. warehouse sitting there for the last six years and now all of a sudden because of COVID, they... Right. No, that, that's a great... In fact, that's what our discussion was around very specifically. And, and the other challenge with that is that we might have business, in fact, we have had businesses who have applied to pay for their back rent as well. So we're gonna have to evaluate both the landlord application as well as the, the uh, potential business that may be leasing the space to make sure that there's not some overlap between what each of them are applying for. But yes, it's for specifically for those businesses who have had renters who haven't been able to pay, uh, maybe who went out of business and weren't able to pay. But yeah, and they've got to be able to show that. Uh, the other thing I should mention too, before I forget, is that the other thing that we do to make sure that there's not an overlap of funding is we send every applicant that goes through our process that we approve, and that will be true for all these as well. We also send those to the county to make sure to get their review to make sure that that they're also not awarding because they have another uh, program that's countywide that they're not also awarding funds for the essentially the same things to these same folks. Did that answer your question, Sharon? Yes, they they could not have had an empty space for a year or two and receive funds because they didn't have a tenant in there already that they're now That's correct. Rent from. Okay, thank You're you. Right. you got it. 
Okay. Um, any other questions from anybody? Yeah, you know, I think it's you know it's great that we have this opportunity. We can continue looking at really creative ways to to help everyone out um, during this time. And um, so I thank you uh, definitely, uh, Miss Lexi, for all the hard work she's done and just helping. I know she's even brought people in. They sat down across the table from each other and, and worked through those applications and make sure we got everyone as much as possible. Um, and uh, just a committee who has been kind of reviewing everything and doing that hard work too. So uh, thanks to everybody for helping out with that. I, I know it's very appreciative, appreciated um, by all those businesses that have um, actually received some benefits. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not a lot, but at least we're able to help out a little bit um, with that money that the, the county was able to, to forward on to us. And, and again, I think, you know, we really got lucky in, in that they were really looking out for us as well. And, you know, they could have taken a, a bigger lion's share and, and, and done whatever they wanted with it, but they, I think they were very fair and equitable in getting that money out to the, um, the municipalities and things. So um, with that, I think we have a good idea of what, what our next steps are, and I think they sound good. So I'm gonna go ahead and let council, um, oh, let me see if there's any other questions from anybody else. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Uh, so if uh, council, uh, Ms. Estes, do you have a question or would you like to make a motion? No, I wanna make a motion. Go ahead. I move I move to adopt resolution 20-063, a resolution amending the COVID-19 business impact assistance program. Okay, and uh, Ms. Duncan? I second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval. Ms. Huffman? Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pertem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. And um, before we move further, uh, let me ask a quick question. Uh, Mira Pro Tim, are you on a laptop or a computer? I'm on my iPad. Okay, so um, I'm going to let you and Paul know that I, for some reason this last item, uh, I started getting a lot of feedback and a lot of weird stuff going on with the, the connection. So just in case I get um, kicked out for whatever reason, I need to reboot back in. Uh, we'll uh, have you and Paul just kind of keep moving with the meeting and I'll jump in as quickly as I can. It seems like it, it's worked itself out, but it was just kind of weird. It was really skipping in and out. But uh, just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware just in case all of a sudden I'm like, you know, my, my free, uh, screen freezes and we're moving forward. So uh, just be aware of that. Roger that. Okay. All right. So we are on to item 9D. Uh, resolution 20-064. A, it says my audio connection has been lost. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we still hear you, man. Okay, yeah, it said it was lost and my mic was gone. So let me go ahead and do this again. Item 9D, resolution 20-064, a resolution to approve the purchase of a fire engine from the Darley Company, uh, Chief Maxson. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, this item is for a new fire engine from the Darley Company. And just to start off, let me share with you where we are. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Is my microphone working okay? You're good, Chief. Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, so where we stand right now is is uh, we have two trucks that really need to be replaced. Our ladder truck's been out of service uh, for the last six weeks. And we're waiting for uh, a gentleman to fly in from Germany because those parts are no longer made. Um, they're gonna bring parts in from Germany to completely redo the sensor system. Um, which drives the ladder on top of the truck. And we hope we'll have that done in the next 30 to 45 days. But we're waiting right now from that per for that person from Germany to come and do that repair for us. Uh, and then we have um, an older engine fleet. Uh, and so what we are planning on doing in the big picture is ordering a new fire engine, which would be here uh, hopefully late 2021. The build time on them right now is about 15 to 16 months. So if we order it here in the next few weeks, hopefully it'll be here around Thanksgiving of 2021. 
But in the meantime, uh, we've done a lot of really critical thinking here in the fire department, and we're fairly comfortable with going with a used ladder truck uh, and just find one here, even if it takes six months or longer uh, to find a used ladder truck, you know, somewhere here in the United States um, that would serve our city for, you know, probably a good 10 years or so. Um, the thing about our ladder truck is it's just beyond its lifespan, and so that's why they don't make the parts anymore. Um, the reason why um, we're going with a, a new engine and a used ladder is a new ladder truck is a little over a million dollars uh, where we hope that we can get a used ladder truck for about 600000 and the used engine is going to be right under 600000 So for the price of a brand new ladder truck, hopefully eventually we're going to be able to get the new engine and, and the used ladder truck. So that's the big picture as to what's going on. And this agenda item is in reference to the, the new fire engine. So I just want to give you a little bit of information. Um, we currently have a 1999 fire engine with 136,000 miles that will be replaced by this engine, uh, the new engine. Uh, the fire engine fleet and fountain is aging and that I hope that this investment will help us catch up. I have authored a fire and ambulance fleet replacement plan that will help the city of Fountain with long-term capital outlay planning. Uh, I started working on a fire a uh, fire engine design last year that would best serve the citizens of Fountain. Um, just a little bit of background, um, I have built and purchased 23 fire engines during my career of six different variations. Um, and when I was doing this process, I met with all of our shifts and got feedback from here in the fire department from everyone that's going to be using this fire engine. But I've also met with our mechanics at our fleet shop to make sure that this truck is something that they can uh, continue to work on. It's in line with what they already have for, you know, commonality of parts and whatnot. And if we do approve this purchase, um, part of it is going to be uh, free training for our mechanics on the pump and also on the foam system. So this proposal is for a 2021 Darley fire engine with 750 gallons of onboard water with the 1500 gallon per minute pump. Uh, we, um, that's pretty much consistent with what we've been doing. Um, our last engine, which was bought, I know a few of you counselors helped with that process in 2017. That was 500 gallons of water. We're going with 750 on this one just because on the interstate, a lot of times we are running short on water. So the 750 gallons of water will, will help us uh, out there on the interstate especially. Um, this is a little bit different because we are going with a side-mounted pump panel. Uh, which is gonna make the truck shorter, but we're gonna put that on the passenger side of the truck so that person is standing out of traffic so they don't get ran over. Uh, the compartments are configured very similar to our other engines. Uh, and there's also a special compartment with this truck that we haven't done before to keep the dirty gear away from the firefighters to reduce their cancer risk, which is a big thing with us. Um, the compressed air foam system is a first for fountain and will greatly help our firefighting efficiency with the fuels today and especially with the million gallon uh, fuel farm that we have in South Fountain here, um, having a really good um, foam system is gonna really help us get those fires out quickly. Uh, and so this truck is, every. I just wanna point out that every fire engine out there is completely custom. Uh, these specifications have been used before and already engineered. And that's just one way that we save money. If you go in and completely design something from the ground up, it has to be engineered and they have to do a lot of different tests. And so that, that really drives the cost up. And I've always compared it to if I walked into a Ford dealer and asked for a custom F-150 pickup that was three feet longer than what they sell in the lot, they probably aren't gonna do it in the first place, but they would charge me a lot of money to engineer that truck to make sure that it's safe. Um, this engine is, is set to be built as a brand new truck, but sold to us as a demo price. Um, what Darley has done is they've negotiated a special rate um, with their part suppliers. Um, so they put the truck together, but the lights and the door handles and the pump, um, you know, the water tank, everything comes from suppliers. And so their suppliers and the labor have negotiated a special price for us if we, if we purchase this vehicle. And the company just wants to be able to use the vehicle in their advertisements. And uh, as a result of this, we're gonna save about $40,000 off the list price of this truck. 
Um, the Darley Company is also extended to the city of Fountain, a HGAC. And what that stands for is that's the Houston Galveston Buy Board. Um, I've, I've used them for about the last 11 to 12 years. And what it is, it's a group of local governments that combine their buying power, um, kind of in lieu of going out to bid for things. So when you have all those governments that pull together to make large purchases, such as fire engines, uh, it really saves us all money and a lot of time. So they are extending that HDAC uh, price to us. Uh, I do want to point out the reason why we are trying to get this accomplished now is that we do know there's a scheduled 3% price increase on, on the vehicle in about 30 days that we, we don't want to have that happen. Um, and I do all want to point out too that Darley Company built our 1941 antique fire engine that we still ha have here uh, in Fountain that pumps today. Um, and this this engine would mean that we have two engines that are 80 years apart. Uh, and then, as you will see in the agenda item, I have built the small contingency into the price of the truck, and that is just from my experience of being the fire truck factory uh, numerous times. Um, when we go out for our 50% build point, um, there's just there's a lot of things that you, you can't really foresee when you're specifying a truck such as you may want shelves in a certain place, or there might be something that, that you need to do. So having a small contingency, it may not be necessary, but it's nice to have that. Um, and with that, um, I stand for any question that you may have. Okay, real quick, Scott um, wanted to add something as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to add, this is another area where the CARES Act dollars actually um, help, the, help the city of Fountain quite a bit. Um, the feds have basically authorized those CARES dollars to be used to fund all of our public safety uniformed first responder salaries from March through the end of December. And so, and that's, that's regardless of if those um, wages were already budgeted or not. So essentially what that's going to do for us is it will allow us to take those dollars that were set aside in our budget for public safety salaries and um, use the CARES Act dollars to pay for those. Well, what that means is that those general fund dollars we were gonna spend will now um, remain in our fund balance. And so um, I just, I bring that up because one of the thoughts that we had knowing that there was um, some serious needs when it comes to our, to our uh, fire vehicles is we, what we thought we would do is um, as we work through this next budget, which we're doing now, um, we would budget to use those funds that were saved because of the CARES Act dollars we would use those to budget towards um, paying for this engine. So I just wanted to add that real quick. Did I, I don't know if I explained that well. I hope I did, um, but basically CARES Act dollars paying for uh, salaries is gonna allow us to use um, general fund dollars to pay for this instead of the salaries. That's all so I wanted it, to add. It's getting us there faster than, than uh, if we didn't have a CARES Act. Yep, that's right. Okay. Okay, um, uh, thanks for the presentation, uh, Chief, on that. Um, uh, if this gets approved tonight, I don't know if you're aware since you're new uh, that anytime we get a new fire truck in, the mayor gets to drive it first around the town with the lights on. So just so okay. you know, uh, but <laughs> that's no, no not- problem. we can, we can yeah. arrange for that. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. I'm just joking. I don't want everyone getting all mad about it. But um, uh, if we have uh, council um, questions, Ms. Thompson. I would first like to say that I am extremely impressed with your fire department fleet assessment and replacement program plan that you um, included in our packets. Uh, the amount of time that you've put into really studying and listening to everyone and what our city needs are is, is extremely impressive. And I would really like our citizens to understand what an outstanding fire chief we have in this city and um, that you are thinking long term for a replacement plan of the vehicles that we need for this city. And hopefully in a few years, we won't have any vehicles in the poor category um, on this chart that you created. Um, nothing will be below fair. And I think is that a is that a fair assessment to hope for? It is. Absolutely. I you know, I think if we take care of these two trucks that we're talking about this evening, um, the ladder and, and this engine here in the next, you know, if we got those accomplished here in the next 18 months or so, um, I don't really think we're going to be needing to purchase 
um, anything you know fire engine wise um, for years to come. But it it it's just very impressive how you studied it um, and put it on a paper for us in a very easy to understand way, and I I really appreciate that. And I hope if citizens have concerns about you know, where our fire department is going, why there isn't a station where they, um, where we all would like to have their fourth station, right? But you're laying us on a path very well thought out in terms of fire, hiring firefighters, uh, EMTs, and the equipment we need, so that when we do have the the money um, for the fourth in you know station, we will be prepared for it. And um, I really, really appreciate that. And if people are wondering about that, this is a great document. I'm sure you wouldn't mind sharing it with the public. Um, I hope because um, anybody should feel free to call you to look at that, look at this because it, it really explains where we are and where we need to need to be going to because uh, we need the equipment to be safe. We can't have our fire engines going down the street with doors uh, flying open. I did witness that happen one day and thank heavens it wasn't a person that came flying out. It was a piece of equipment. So. Um, you know, it, it, we need to, we're taking care of that. So thank you very much. And um, yeah. unless anybody has any other discussion, Mayor, I'll make a motion, but I wanna get, I don't wanna overstep. Okay, any other questions from council on this item? And or public, I don't see anything from public. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I make a motion to approve resolution 20-064, resolution to approve the purchase of a new fire engine from the Darley Fire Company. I hope it's not another 40 years before we uh, purchase another one from them. <laughs> All right, uh, Mayor Pro Tem? I enthusiastically second. Okay, we have a motion and an enthusiastic second. Uh, Ms. Huffman. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Thompson, how do you vote? Oh, enthusiastically, yes. Council Member Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Enthusiastically, yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. All right. Thanks, Chief. We're excited about this. And uh, as, as uh, Ms. Thompson said, just that information alone just really helps us to, it help, it's a good guiding document now. We can really make sure that we're, we're staying on top of those things. So uh, we'll move on to item 9E, e, resolution 20-065, a resolution authorizing the transition of a per diem firefighter EMT position to a part-time firefighter position. And we'll go ahead and let Chief uh, Max continue. All right. So in an effort uh, to, to save some, some money here in the city, we'd like to take a per diem position. Uh, per diem is we have around 15 of them right now, and that allows us to fill in for vacations or we have special events. Those are typically the folks that we use. And a part-time position is working 50% of what a full-time position does. And so we would be taking a per diem position and making it a part-time position. It just means that this person is now gonna have a set schedule that they work one half of what a full-time firefighter would. Um, the hourly rate is essentially the same. There's a little bit of holiday pay that's a little bit different, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that, you know, that big amount of money. But this also helps us to cut back on overtime. For example, this past weekend, um, we had somebody on overtime um, and which is, which is common, but we were down to our, one of our last folks in the department, which was one of the captains. And, and that is uh, for 24 hours of overtime, you're, you're looking at, you know, I'm paying a per diem, uh, probably about 15 to $16 an hour. That overtime rate is close to $60 an hour for 24 hours. And so that's, that's where the cost savings comes in and doing some of these things um, and why we're wanting to reclassify this position. Okay, um, seems simple enough. I will see if there's any questions from council. Yeah, I have no mics on. I'll look at public. Um, again, nothing there. 
So if no further discussion on this item, what would council like to do? Uh, Ms. Duncan. I would just like to say thank you, uh, staff uh, Maxson, or if anyone heard his beginning of his presentation was to save the city money. So I move to approve resolution 20-065 and approve transition of a per diem firefighter EMT position to a part-time firefighter EMT position. Okay, and um, Mr. Applegate. Second. All right, we have a motion and second uh, for approval. Uh, Ms. Huffman. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Um, I think that's it for our uh, normal agenda. I'm going to go ahead and go through correspondence, comments, and ex officio reports. I'll start with uh, City Manager Scott Train or anything. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I know you guys have seen way too much of me tonight, so I just have two quick things. Both of them were, are, were mentioned by um, Councilmember Thompson earlier, but I just wanted to add a little bit to both of them. Number one is the trunk or treat. We've been having conversations. Uh, the initial thinking was we probably weren't going to be able to have that event, but we started having some conversations internally about the possibility of doing some sort of drive-through event. And so we're working on the logistics for something like that to see if we can make that thing work, um, how we could make it work, et cetera. So I just wanted to give you uh, the council a little bit of information on that um, because I think that that event could be actually a lot of fun. So uh, we're working on that. And then the military banner program, Sharon, I might've missed this. Did you mention that we're talking about expanding it to veterans? I didn't, um, talk, okay. no, I didn't. I just mentioned we were even gonna make some changes yeah. to it, so. Okay, so yeah, I, I thought maybe I missed that. So just wanna, just throwing it out there for the council, just give you a heads up, but um, we're working on that, but due to um, some items on the next council agenda, it'll probably be, be the first one in September that we'll bring that back for. So that's all I had, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of items tonight. We've got some good news that came in today. Um, our engineering division and our Duckwood project were nominated and actually won an award from the engineering news record um, for best project on our Duckwood project. So kudos to Brandy and Ben Sheets and everyone. Well, those are those two compile our and make up our engineering division, but great news on them. Um, as we, that was just announced today. So as I get further information, I'll bring that forward to the council. Um, but our engineering division really has done, you know, yeoman's work the last couple of years on getting a lot of uh, public works project done. So um, that was great news. They were um, recognized for that work. Also, I I'm not sure, Paul, are you able to share, share those uh, pictures with council? Um, the pictures that Paul is sh sharing right now, that's from Linda Mood in our heritage area. And I just wanna keep this on the council's radar. Um, we've received several complaints this week regarding the condition of Linda Mood and you, as Paul runs through those, you can see the, the kind of dire condition of these. Um, the mayor's addressed this a couple of different times, um, but this is the time of year where we really are doing a lot of road construction in the city. So folks are pointing these out. Um, we're having more and more of these complaints coming in from the neighborhoods. Um, we attempted to address this with the Roadway Focus Group, um, their tax initiative that they put forward to the citizens, and the council, of course, supported that. But we just want to keep it on everyone's radar. When we see these type of conditions in our neighborhoods, there's really not an easy fix to these. It's not something we can simply go out and do a uh, dig out and fix. These are almost reconstructions. So um, we are putting together a public works audit of specifically our neighborhood um, roads and the conditions. 
but we can expect um, those to be multi, multi millions. And just to keep it on everyone's radar, we're going to need to address these eventually, um, as we just do not have the budgets right now for uh, Bob McDonald and our streets division to address these. And Bob really does a great job. He does the best he can. He's very open, transparent, and honest with the public on the cost of these and um, that we've attempted those initiatives. Um, but I just want to make sure we keep it on the radar. We've we've got several areas in the city and the neighborhoods that we've got these type of road conditions and complaints coming in. So, Mayor, that's all I've got. Um, I don't know if you have anything to uh, to comment on these, but uh, we're going to keep trying. And, and with what we've got, we're going to keep uh, fixing those. And I appreciate Bob and, and his guys' efforts um, this time of year to do these. You know, and, and the reality is, you know, uh, and, and I go back to when people ask, I'm like, well, you know, the, the voters said that that uh, they didn't want the tax initiative. We, we gave them the reasons why. They had a really good group of people who, who worked hard on this, uh, citizens from across the, the city who, who um, you know, are out there driving the roads just like the rest of us. And, uh, you know, the, the voters said no. And so um either they feel like we have this money sitting i know that a lot of people feel like we just have money sitting around that we can just spend on projects whenever we want which is it which isn't the reality but the other part of that is is um you know when we've had other initiatives that we wanted to push forward and and uh, they don't like those items and you know they go back to well we voted no once and so we're going to stick hard and fast to that if that's if that's the way we want to play that and and uh, i'm being a little gruff on this one but it's it's very frustrating when when um, you know we have people who, who want to scream and yell about certain things, but when when the vote comes out a certain way, that's that's you know that's the wish of the people. So we're going to go with it that way. That apparently they feel like the roads are fine, even though the evidence has been presented and 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 is out there. So uh, you know, uh, regardless, we're going to keep moving forward with with what we have and and working hard. And and when it comes to budget time, we we as a council we sit down and we try to make sure that uh, every department gets what they need. Um, based on what we have and so it's like we don't make imaginary money up somewhere we don't have money sitting in coffers um, we don't get paid by developers to do these things actually developers are fighting us um, that they don't have to give us money so you know it's it's just one of those things and and unfortunately for those roads who 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 do need that work and 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 the street crew who's working tirelessly and very hard um, this is the reality that we live in in this community um, and until um, you know the, the citizens uh, you know, want to shoulder that burden uh, rather than complain about it. We're gonna we're gonna deal with these issues for for some time to come. So thanks, Todd, on on showing that and and you know maybe we'll try again in the future. But um, again, you know the, the voters have spoken, so we're gonna stick with that and and we'll keep moving forward. Uh, unfortunately, for those who put in so much time and effort to to show the need and and show that we really needed that, but uh, uh, we'll keep moving forward with that one. Um, thanks for that, uh, Troy Johnson. Anything? Nothing for me tonight. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, Chief Maxson, anything further from you? Uh, yes, uh, I have two things. Um, I just want to say that uh, tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. here at Station 1, we'll be having a pending ceremony for our newest fire captain, Ryan Torres. Um, for anybody who wants to come to that, we're doing it outside. Uh, so we're doing, you know, social distancing. And then um, effective... Uh, this this weekend um, we'll be promoting uh, Veronica uh, Garrett um, to fire lieutenant and she will be the first female uh, officer in this department in the 117 year history. Uh, her pinning ceremony will be scheduled in the near future, um, but that's two very exciting things for us. Okay, and you know what? Congratulations to those two. They are very hardworking people. Um, and I know Ryan has done a ton for this community in the time that he's been here. And and same with um, uh, Veronica as well. And just the work that they do for our department and for our citizens is is second to none. So they're very well very well deserving um, accolades and, and I'm definitely gonna try to make it out there tomorrow. Um, Ms. Martinez, do you have anything further? No, nothing further. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Trilch. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I have nothing further this evening. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, Paul, anything further from IT? 
Nothing else this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, and again, thanks to IT for helping with all this uh, stuff going on and, and making sure we're, we're able to do this virtually. Uh, and of course, Ms. Huffman. Nothing for me tonight, sir. Thank you. Um, did you want to mention the uh, movie night in the park coming up? Yes, we're very excited about the movie night in the park coming up. It is scheduled. Well, it's to be scheduled. Uh, we actually have, uh, we encourage reservations online. Uh, there's only so many people, as you know, that we can have there at the park. Um, so we have our next movie night coming up here on the 14th. Um, and honestly, I can't remember again what the movie is. <laughs> so I'll have to look that up. It's Lion King, isn't it? Lion King. Perfect. <laughs> so okay, please, I uh, encourage everybody to uh, register online so that we have your contact information and we don't have to ask for it there at the gate. And like I said, we are limited to attendees. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Huffman. And I think that's it for staff. If I miss anybody, please let me know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through council super quickly. Uh, Ms. Duncan. Okay, our census 2020 uh, residents have the opportunity to complete their surveys online by phone or by mail and census takers are also out and about in our area so if someone comes knocking at your door, please go to your door and answer it may be someone very important. Uh, I can't stress enough the importance of filling out the census and providing an accurate count. Everyone counts that lives in your home, including the babies. Also, if you are 17 years and you turn 18 before the November general election, you are eligible to cast primary ballots. Um, so 17 year olds can vote in Colorado's upcoming presidential primary election. It's a new state law that gives them the right to vote for the first first time and that's all I have okay thank you um, Mr. Applegate sorry I kind of lost my mind there did you skip Mr. Geek uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to Mr. Geek go ahead <laughs> <laughs> okay <clears throat> I just like to mention something about the abundance of damage done to our roads here that they were built wrong and there's nothing we can do about that but i was hoping that eventually we can do something about this abundance of heavy trash trucks on all the roads constantly i've been looking forward to that coming back and see what we can do about it that's all okay thank you um and so i'm i got my little a placard from the the thing here i'm trying to figure out which way I'm going here. Everything's all turned around. Uh, Mr. Geek, I'm sorry for skipping over you. That's fine. I just would like uh, to know if Chief Maxson needs somebody for a, a weekend or a 24 hour shift. I'll be more than happy to work for $60 an hour. <laughs> uh, he's staying silent on that one, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, anything else? No, right. I'm good, thank you. Okay, great. Um, Ms. Estes. I have nothing further. Mayor Pro Tem. Nothing further for me, thanks. Ms. Thompson. Yeah, we just like to remind everybody that uh, Illinois is going to be closed Thursday. I think that is, uh, Todd, correct me if that's wrong, um, for some railroad construction. So um, be patient when. You know, everybody is going to have to go on to Ohio to get home in the evening. So just everybody be patient. And um, also um, just remind people hackers are alive and well out there. I had a friend that had her email hacked this week. Um, so, you know, and then some people answered it. Um, you know, your friend isn't going to send you an email that says, do you have an Amazon account? Um, and unfortunately, some people believed the email. So uh, some issue, you know, it's just they're alive and well out there. So when you open stuff, be careful because uh, Greg can probably attest hackers don't take a break. Okay, yep, thank they're, you. They are 24 7, 365, no breaks at all. Right. Um, okay, thanks for that. Uh, the only other thing is as we move into next week, 
uh, and our local school districts will be starting kids back. Um, I just ask that everyone has patience with uh, the the, pros the progress of, of starting school again. And and uh, as I keep telling everyone, and this is unprecedented. This isn't something that uh, um, anybody knows anything about. We're we're learning this as we go, and it's it's uh, it's a fast moving. Um, uh, thing that, that has affected everyone across the globe and so you know I ask for patience when you go back to school and, and you're dealing with your teachers and you know what they 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 want kids back in those buildings and, and in their classrooms so they can teach uh, more than anybody else because that's that's their passion that's their job and that's what they want to do um, and it's it's they none of these teachers have gotten into this profession um, to teach online and so it's their wish that they had kids in as well so uh, just I ask for patience and and and, and helping these kids get back into school and getting some normal back to them is, you know, cause this has been crazy for probably them even more for us, but uh, um, just just uh, be aware of that. We're gonna have kids out and about again, getting to school and those types of things. So um, just be wary of all that's going on um, as we move forward through COVID. So uh, I think that's it. Our next meeting is going to be August 25th. We have no executive sessions. Uh, so I will adjourn our meeting. Thank you for coming uh, tonight and being a part of our um, city council meeting. Take care.